Well, good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining in. Uh, my name is Kukule Tuklava. I'm your host and the president of Oman Lomnoto. Thank you uh, for taking your time to come through here and be part of our Sunday sessions where we talk economic empowerment and help each other to really learn about our economy, what opportunities are there for us, really having meaningful conversations and discussions about um, what is important in our land. We are dealing with issues of um, unemployment, obviously, which is the resultant effect of our entrepreneurial engagement. Uh, and um, you know, employment is a function of entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship must happen before employment uh, kicks in. It's very important for us to understand that. And I truly appreciate that you take your time every Sunday. Free State, together with uh, Dr. Godfrey Marange, doing what we do best in terms of economic activity. Dr. Marange being a Lelaba, would be just greet uh, the, the viewers. Greetings to all viewers. I'm here with the president. And I'm in good hands, he's in good hands. <laughs> At the Beehive. At the Beehive. We actually are visiting the Beehive therapy. Mm. We're dealing with issues of um, uh, Beehive therapy, including the medicinal herbs that you all know about. Uh, it's very interesting here when you sleep uh, on, top of on top of the bees and they're just humming under your bed the whole night or the whole time. <coughs> and that uh, that gives you, what what does it do, by the way? Just tell, tell them about what it about. does. Is yeah. that you are accessing this ionized air because the bees are uh, foraging for all these trees around here. If you can hear, this place has got tranquility, it has got a lot of birds, and there's got of lots of flowers, and that's where the bees are going in and foraging and coming back into the colonies. We've got each bed has got about four colonies, and you will see that uh, later on, I think the president will send a video clip of what would have taken him through so that everybody can see. So now, uh, amongst the bees, family there are those who are guarding the entrance the bees there are those who are flipping to make sure the temperature is maintained at 37 degrees and, and then there's the queen who is surrounded by them and this uh, the, and what they are bringing in water and forage uh, medicinal uh, uh, plants is then ionized into the air and that's the air you breathe and that air will go into activate your self-healing frequencies of your body, including the the uh, the uh, latent immune cells, they are activated, and you go into a deep sleep that you never had before, and your body starts self-healing processes. And these bees, you don't pay them; they are doing their work, they build their cycle, and so on. So we teach people here how we integrate these bees with our medicinal herbs. So like here, we are, we are doing quite uh, several herbs on a small scale, and then we are going to do turmeric, and also that means the honey so produced, we'll call it the turmeric honey, whatever honey, all the, uh, the uh, ingredients which is foraged by the bees around here, we name the honey, which has got a huge market in uh, Germany, in the Catholic Church. Remember when we were there with Schwabat uh, here with Nongos in Germany for me, uh, we found that every church, every little village has got four or five Catholic churches. So we want to bring those people back to church and only sell our uh, honey after church. And it will be traced as organic honey because it's foraging on uh, what we are planting. Yes. Wow. Thank you so much, my brother. That was just a reminder of what this whole industry is about. It's just beyond uh, just producing, but it's got a lot of other integrated, um, you know, mechanisms around uh, the things that my leader has been talking about here. Without any waste of time, we are going to be talking tonight about the, the dairy industry. This is the very important industry that we have to tackle 
because I think all of us, except those who are lactose intolerant and milk, whatever intolerant, we use milk. And we use milk in our uh, baking, uh, we use milk in our, uh, when we drink it even with tea, we use milk literally in each and every cycle of our food life. There's some element of milk there. Um, and then this milk is obviously coming from some livestock and which livestock we really must know how uh, you know uh, we, we deal with it. I've got a brother and a friend that I've known for a few years and he actually attended a, a couple of weeks ago here on our uh, the Zoom meeting platform. And he, he, he started reminding me, I know you by the way. I said, yeah, I know you as well. We know each other uh, because we've dealt with each other at the level of um, milk SA before. And he, his name is Godfrey Atogwa. And he's going to be talking us through this particular important industry of ours, which has to do with milk. I must say, by the way, very importantly, we are not just talking here. As you know, we've got three things that we always say we must do in this country. That's implementation, implementation, implementation. In German language, it's um, 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 So that's what we are about. We're about um, yeah. So uh, this is a build-up process towards a implementation at the highest level. The build-up process towards making sure that we don't just end up talking, but we implement the things we're talking about. This brother who's going to talk here, he's going to be part of the launch of Rural Chamber of Commerce and Industry in Devon on the 22nd of November at the Onomo Hotel. And quite a lot of things that he will be talking about will transpire there, will have to be leveraged off there because there is a big uh, a, a company that I'm not going to be talking about here yet, which is going to be launched in South Africa, which requires huge amounts of milk to make food. Whatever type of food it is, I will explain that at that particular point in time when we are in Durban. And we are going to be having a some of our friends from Dubai will be flying over to South Africa who have been part of uh, our journey and who would like to make sure that uh, for those with capital project and serious good big projects can be funded, we can tap into the pipe funding pipeline. Obviously, we'll have our own local funders as well. But most importantly, I was talking to the Minister of Lands and the Rural Development, Mr. Nyoso, uh, who is going to be there as well. Together with Dr. Godfrey Marang and many of the people, we will be planning our rural economic development. And um, for those who are not staying in rural areas, don't think we, you are outside of this. You are part of this yourself because by and large, 99%, you've got your rural dwelling somewhere where you trace yourself from. And uh, so this is just a tree uh, sort of like Kessa towards our speaker who's going to be talking the milk or the dairy industry. And we're going to engage him thereafter and talk about how do we take opportunities with him going forward. It's a very great opportunity he made. Mr. Godfrey Ratogwa, over to you, sir. If you can just, wherever you are, open your, 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 your mic as well as your video because we are recording this. We are now transposing all of our things, all of them to the YouTube channel, because we want you to go listen to these talks on YouTube. That's why we want every speaker who's gonna be speaking here to be able to open their uh, video so that we can see them as they speak. If they've got any presentation, they will tell us, but I think Mr. Ratogwa will give get us the presentation afterwards. Over to you, sir. If you can just introduce yourself thoroughly, I know you are the the, the, man, the manager director there at Milk SA, just tell us more about yourself and your journey, and then hit it. Tell us about the dairy industry, which we are looking forward to. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Che. My name is Godfrey Ratogwa. My journey, I've been working with agriculture for a few years. 
I started uh, with the so-called uh, vendor marketing board where I assisted farmers to export their avos and their flowers to Europe. From there, I went to the National Agricultural Marketing Council, where I was the vice chairperson to Professor Kassir, and later I became the chairperson. And uh, in, during that period, I facilitated with uh, other people transformation in the dairy industry. And I was responsible for the so-called 20% of the statutory levies in the dairy industry must be earmarked specifically for empowering black entrepreneurs wherever they are. And then later on, I was appointed as a director of Milk SA. And then the minister said we need to implement a transformation in the dairy industry. We need to somebody to lead the transformation. I was then appointed as a transformation manager within the dairy industry. From there, in order to be relevant to the context, I organized workshops from province to province, trying to promote partnership and to understand the, the situation on the ground with all the provinces. And those provincial workshops culminated in a national workshop here in Pretoria, where we come up with a strategy or a plan as to how best can we promote meaningful transformation in the dairy industry. I will now go through what we drafted by then. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I, I, I can't hear you. I can't hear you, Mr. Ratogwa. I, I was quiet. He was struggling with sharing. We wanted to share the slides with you, but he says he's struggling. Okay, I think oh. he got it. Okay, okay. Yeah, the end kind of a seven. Okay, Mr. Ratogwa, can, can yes. I, 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 I'm, I'm going to give you the hosting rights, right? So uh, I, I, I hear that you've got somebody that you are working with there if they can just help accept the people as they are coming in because I, 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 my gadget doesn't cost share. I'll give you the hosting rights, right? Okay. So then, then you'll be able to share this. I've made you a host. So then you should be able to share. Go ahead and share. Thank you. Slide number seven. Uh, I, I think a... I am coming from a company called Milk SA. Milk SA is a Section 21 company which comprises milk producer organization and the South African Milk Processors Organization. MPO stands for the primary producers, while in some pro stands for processors like Clover, Parmalat, and so on. What is the vision of Milk SA? The vision of Milk SA is promoting a healthy South African dairy community. And what do we mean by dairy community? We refer to the primary producers, we refer to the processors, and we, re we refer to the consumers.
Yeah. And uh, if uh, you were to say whatever we do, we are guided by the visions of RSA government, which says a transformed and adaptive, adaptive economy, economy that, that, that is that characterized is by high level of economic growth that generates employment and reduces levels of inequality. That is our government. And then again, we have got the DTI, which says a restructured, vibrant South African economy with meaningful participation uh, of black people, women, youth, people living with disability and the rural or underdeveloped communities in the mainstream economy in a manner that has a positive impact on employment, economic income redistribution, structural readjustment, and economic growth. It was then by then a DAF, which says a leading, dynamic, prosperous, and people-centered sector. What do we do, as Emilike say, we administer dairy industrial uh, statutory regulation, registration, returns, and levies. We promote dairy product benefits, nutrition, and health aspects. We conduct research and the development in the dairy industry. We keep and distribute dairy industry statistics and information. We promote quality of dairy products. We facilitate transformation in the dairy industry. That's what we do in general in order to promote what I will share with you later. Why does Milk SA do its job? To promote dairy industry growth, to promote international competitiveness, to create confidence in dairy products in terms of quality assurance, to provide market signal to role players. We need to provide the market information so that you understand where you are and to promote equitable transformation. And what is what are we doing? Yeah. I think this is what are the values and the principles of transformation. Individual initiative, accountability, competence, integrity, partnership in business, passion and commitment, respect for others, and success, and success. Let me explain. We believe, as Milke say, or a transformation initiative, we, I can't create Trevor Noah, I can't create uh, Ibony Chaka Chaka, I can't create uh, Tiger Woods, but we need to find somebody who, we, who takes initiative on his or her own. And that person must be committed. And then we come in and say, but what are the challenges for this person in order to pursue her passion and realize his or her business objectives? And then we partner with him so that the journey can be lighter. Uh, what is the mission of transformation? Mm -mm. Facility mm -hmm. the establishment of successful black dairy entrepreneurs by ensuring competency development, access to loan finance, access to support services, reduction of constraints, exposure to dairy industry, and access to markets. That is our mission. 
But what is the vision of transformation? This vision was arrived at by all their industry role players at a workshop that we held here in Pretoria. It was, it is said, yeah, yeah. sustainable dairy mm -hmm. industry that mm -hmm. reflects mm -hmm. population mm -hmm. demographics of this mm -hmm. of South mm -hmm. Africa. Mm -hmm. The challenge is, mm -hmm. is the current dairy industry reflecting the demographics of South Africa? I think we are far away from that. When I said so, somewhere in 2015, no, no, 2010, 2011, I said by 2018, at least 25% of the dairy production in South Africa must be in the hands of black people. I was told I must not raise expectations. But the other challenge to share with you, my efforts to form partnership with the province did not succeed because I was advised there is capital intensive, is a operational intensive, it does not create enough jobs and that therefore there was not much commitment from the provinces. Okay. Okay. Uh, we, we, we can't hear you, Godfrey. We can't hear you. Please uh, unmute yourself. Okay. Okay. Thank you. No, no. The person helping me just getting the, the relevant, I mean, document to show you the, the, the volumes. Yeah, you, 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 I'm a, please take it easy. Somebody is just helping me to get into the figures that I can show you what are the production volumes. I think here, this here you can see, just wanted to show uh, the number of cows in head per producer depending on the, on, on, I mean, on the province. You can see that Western Cape 564, it was 2022, Eastern Cape 1000, that's the average, you know, yeah. The average was 622 uh, number of cows per producer in the country in 2022. So the other challenge that you we agreed we need to share 
This is the, this table indicates tonnage of milk uh, in 2020, 20, from 2013 to 2022. We can see that uh, in 2013, it was 2.9 million tons, while in 2022, it was 3.3 million tons. It went down from 2014, no, yeah, 2018 uh, to 2022, from 3.4 to 3,3. That is the average milk I mean, uh, 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 purchases, you know, no, production, uh, 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 purchases of unprocessed milk per year between 2023 and 2022. I'm going to update this and I give you the latest one. It's just now that now I was driving from Venda to straight to my home. I did not go to the office, but I'll give you the latest figures. Yeah. yeah, no, yeah, can't say. Ah, uh, no, don't can't say. Okay, why? Who ask me, what are we currently doing? As I indicated, the average head of cows in South Africa, mass commercial farmers, is plus minus. 450. And when we go to the black owned dairy enterprises, it is plus minus 50, I don't know, 50, 50 to 75. And you ask why it is just like that. I think the main challenge is that access to capital in order to increase the dairy head is a great challenge. And then again, we realize that as of now, veterinary services are also a great challenge. Further flow planning amongst our farmers is also a great challenge. We as Milk South Africa, we support existing black dairy enterprises. Number one, you must have got your own farm. Number two, you must be milking. Number three, you must have got a market. And then we will come and assist you to address other constraints and the challenges so that you become true commercial farmers. When we come there, we will start by giving this black dairy entrepreneur plus or minus 25 heifers. Those heifers must be pregnant and at least five months pregnant. From there, we will also support that imaging or black dairy farmer with the on-farm infrastructure, such as milking parlor, uh, establishment of pasture, ensuring that uh, veterinary services is uh, there when it's needed. But again, on a regular basis, on, on a monthly basis, we monitor what you are doing. What is happening with the, your dairy head? How much milk are you producing per cow per day? What are the challenges you are encountering that hamper what you dream to achieve? And uh, together, we try to address those challenges so that the farmer remains in business. What we have found by and large, a large number of our farmers don't have got enough milk volume. And this discourages milk processors 
because they find that traveling to go and collect 500 liters from one farmer using 10,000 tanks is very expensive. These are the major challenges. I've just got a report, although I'm not going to mention the buyer, who told me that he is going to abandon farmers in free state, farmers in KZN, because their volume is not sufficient. But this abandonment is not going to be limited to black dairy entrepreneurs. Understand it will also affect established commercial farmers. And you ask me, what are you doing mainly currently? We are busy assisting these farmers to establish permanent pasture. Number two, to ensure that they've got solar system on their farms. Number three, we want to ensure that they've got proper calf rearing pens. Uh, number four, we want to assist them to buy extra bulls so that at all times, they are milking at least 80% of their mature cows because currently the ratio is not like that. Some are milking 50%, 60%, 40%, and as a result, they lose a lot of money. Tell me what I will share openly with you as the major challenges. The major challenges from my own observation is that there's no meaningful partnership between uh, the dairy industry, the provincial department, the national department, uh, those are the major challenges. Currently, I'm pushing that we form a strong partnership with the National Department of Agriculture together with the Land Bank, as well as the provincial agriculture, so that we form a meaningful partnership in order to promote meaningful transformation in the dairy industry. The other challenge that I will share with you, which is frustrating, there are those who are in business, but they want to be treated like SASA grant recipients. Yet we believe that we need to come to Mr. Gugulete Kaba and support him and when we support him, he must bring his side. And bear in mind, he cannot be supported for the, forever. This support must also come to other new deserving people. At one point, he or she must stand on his own and prove that indeed I'm a dairy entrepreneur. The other challenge that I found this mentality by established ones that you cannot support uh, emerging black entrepreneurs because when you support them, you're going to take away Godfrey's market share. The market share is limited. I believe that the world in which we live, those who are committed to what they want to do, they must not be hampered by Mr. Ratogwa or maybe my Mr. Kaba, they must do what they can and prove themselves that they are competent enough as long as the market is there to support them because we get into business in order to satisfy market needs. If I've got the opportunity to satisfy market needs, let me be given that opportunity. If I cannot, I will fail on my own, not because somebody is blocking me. If you allow him, he will take away Godfrey's market share. So in short, uh, 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 Chair, I think I will pause here 
and I'm ready for any other questions. And as I indicated, I'll bring more uh, 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 complete information uh, 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 during the week, which is complete. Okay. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much, Godfrey. Uh, thank you, my brother, for uh, sharing this with us um, and just giving us a bit of a high level information on the milk production in South Africa. Um, I can tell you, we're gonna take up this program and we are going to make sure that we drive it uh, together with the farmers, those that want to farm on milk in South Africa. Um, I do know that we've got our friends from Eswatini and everywhere else. This program that we're going to start, it's going to be including not only South African farmers, but uh, our African farmers uh, all over. So it um, doesn't matter whether you're in South Africa or not. So I just want to maybe uh, allow for time for questions. I see uh, there's a hand raised by Cindy. So I think, can I see that hand? Um, who would like to ask a question? Uh, please un unmute my brother and then uh, and shoot. Oh, thank you, leadership. Uh, greetings to everyone. Uh, my name is Lucindy Somzimase uh, from uh, King Williamstown in the Eastern Cape. Thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, basically, my my take is been for yes. for the milk industry that we don't have really much uh, processors. Hence, my two years back, I started a company called Dairy King. The the aim is to then add uh, value to the milk that we get from our especially black farmers. So I've been engaging a few of them uh, with a commitment for five thousand liters. But uh, what I've strange that I've found out when I'm engaging finances on financiers, they ask for a lot of things, and 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 one of them is the market access, uh, of takes and all of that. Currently, I've got a uh, true uh, lady that I'm working with in my other business who's doing a rep for Coca-Cola, access to 200, 250 spaza shops. Uh, and uh, the, then through her, we've been able to access all of them with an interest that they bring samples, then we'll be able to assist uh, and, and buy and, and uh, pay on, on delivery, cash on delivery. So my, my, my side of frustration leadership is that financing processors because I even went to one of the develop, development uh, corporations in the province, and they told me that I must have me, uh, a farm, then I must have cows. Uh, I asked them a question. Uh, does Nando's have uh, chicken? Does Kentucky have chicken? And Kentucky and Nando's are only contracting farmers, and they're making their product, and they're well dominant. And now, and now they, they asked me that question and I had, I had to uh, rub so, uh, salt to the wound or something because uh, they had attitude after that because I had to escalate to the CEO to say, look, man, we don't have much processors. The processors that are getting in the country are white. And that's a fact for 30 years. And it's unfair for a country that is majority black to have such a status. And we continue with that. Even the farmers that are emerging are supplying to the same monopoly. And mm -hmm. now uh, with uh, Clover and them being bought by international companies, means that our market is owned by international market. So my frustration mm -hmm. leadership has been that we are not moving a needle because mm -hmm. our focus is on supplying to the same channel, same pipeline, and alternatives are not coming to the fore. So I'm very grateful for such a platform as this because I'm seeing that there will be a potential to augment or to change the status quo because we need to change the status quo. Otherwise, our children must forget. So this thing is about the future generation. It's not even about us. So my question is, how can we access financing, even if it's not money coming to my company, but money that will buy equipment? Mm. Because I've got access to the milk, I would access to the market, but I don't have money to buy it. There are guys in Pumalanga that are selling equipment. There are guys in PE that are selling equipment. But to get that equipment, I need money. But I've got a market. I've even engaged the schools. In my district, here, Pavolo City, I've got 440 schools. I've started to mm -hmm. engage the schools. They've got an appetite. 
They say once a week, we're eating milk and mass once a week mm. for the entire mm. year. A week, once a week, one time a week, one day a week, we eat mass. But we are buying it from the retail market, which is not owned by us. Yeah. Very frustrating situation that we're finding ourselves in. And unfortunately, we don't have that broad mind to say, how do we change this thing now? Because now the guys mm. that have got money, they are not focusing on supporting anything that is emerging to change that. So that is my frustration leadership. I said, just, just find out that this thing must change. However it changes, but it must change. Otherwise, we must forget. Then the democracy that we've attained is for nothing. Thank you. That's Thank right. you, sir. Thank you so much, Mr. Masse. That's truly appreciated. I think you've summarized such a very important point. And I, I think, uh, Godfrey, uh, please take note of that because we're going to come back and answer. I want to take three questions at a time. Um, and then uh, 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 Ms. Pumeza, can I come back to you? And then thereafter to uh, Zoleg Amsani. Uh, unmute Pumeza. Okay, Zolega, uh, tr try and unmute uh, whilst Pumeza is still battling. Uh, colleagues, you, you just have a button there that you must press and say unmute yourself uh, so that... Uh... Uh, greetings, colleagues. Yes, Pumeza. How's everyone? We're good. Go ahead. Thanks, thanks. Um, Dada Tokwa, uh, thanks for the presentation. Um, I just want to find out from you one of few things. Uh, based on the milk SA, when you want to be involved in in dairy farming, uh, do you still uh, offer um, the farmers a number of cows and also um, mentor them? in the process so that you can see what they are doing. And also with my little understanding is that uh, for you to offer those cows, they need to have their own cows in place so that uh, they can be able to have, to, to access those cows. So I just want to find out if that is still the same or things have changed. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Pumeza. Let's go to uh, Zoleka and then we go to our speaker. Zolega, unmute yourself. Thank you, uh, Mr. Kaba, uh, for this opportunity. Uh, and thank you to the presentation of Mr. Ratogwa. Uh, my name is Wandi Lembenze. I'm sorry, my daughter uh, captured my Zoom here on my laptop and uh, I must uh, rename it. Um, but my name is Wandile uh, Mbenze and uh, uh, not Zoleg Amsani. I am um, also a SADC uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, Secretary General. I'm very interested in what uh, Mr. Mzimase uh, has been uh, uh, lamenting and uh, uh, prodding us to, to, to resolve. I'll be in the Eastern Cape this week, God willing, uh, meeting um, about three kingdoms, uh, Kingdom of uh, Imidushani, uh, Abatembu and uh, the um, uh, Amashubi in Butterworth uh, to discuss uh, matters of how we can make uh, uh, good use of uh, the land or territory that they rule over. So uh, as he has um, lamented that the value chain is non-existent, especially, especially uh, in terms of uh, black producers, uh, I would like uh, to have his contact details uh, so we can address uh, his challenges 
uh, with regards to the offtake he has and uh, the lack of uh, processing uh, capacity in order for okay. him to supply market. Sure. Uh, so I thank you for this opportunity and I'd like uh, me and uh, Mr. Mzimase to exchange uh, contact details. Uh, and hopefully I'll see him when I'm in uh, the Eastern Cape, if he is available. Okay, no, that's fine. You can just throw that into the chat box so that uh, you can answer. Uh, let me just quickly go back before I take the next three questions, because I would like my brother here, Godfrey, to have something to say. But let's let's have you, Godfrey, please try, try and answer them uh, very briefly. Uh, the, the questions having asked, the second one, Zimase, the markets, the second Question, first question, the second question by Pumeza, do we still offer the cows? If you can just be very brief and succinct in your answer and everybody else thereafter, please. Thank you. Number one, our approach is that we need to support somebody who is producing milk on his or her own because one cannot be everything to everybody. Sure. Our focus is mainly on the primary milk production. When we come to agro-processing, we refer people to agri-B uh, 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 division within the National Department of Agriculture, where you come with 20%, the rest of the money, they will advance on the proof that indeed you have got the capacity to produce and process. Last year, I took them to expose to our uh, beneficiaries of transformation so that they can make their own assessment who deserves support or, or who, do, who does not deserve support for agro processing. I can give you the contact people of the people at the National Department so that you can prove to them. The other challenge is that we do not like to maintain the status quo by taking milk for established farmers and process them. In doing that, while we are do appreciate that uh, we are participating in the value chain, there will be not much transformation in terms of ownership on the ground of production. Okay. The other question, do we still support if you prove to us you have got the farm, you have got your own few cows, you have got the market, will come there running. Okay, right, Mr. Mr. Latoko, allow me to interject you on this. How many cows must you have to prove that uh, you are worthy of the support? Uh, if you have a minimum of 20 cows, I've got no problem. Oh, 20 cows, fine. Then how many cows can you support me with when I've got 20 cows? We will give you plus or minus 25. I love that. So on the 22nd in in Durban, you are coming there with about 1,000 cows because I will have farmers who are, <laughs> who we, are we, we, who I, a lot of cows, right? <laughs> I don't like to be captured. We need to go through a proper process. No, it's fine. We'll capture you through a proper process. Don't worry about <laughs> that. <laughs> okay, right. Let, 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 let's go to Godfrey. In Eswatini, there's lots of Godfrey's here, and Godfrey, and thereafter, Truman Hadebe, and lastly, Kamfat Gumete. Shabbat, uh, thank you so much, President Nongosi. Uh, with the speaker we have, and I really appreciate, and we're so happy to have you as a father of the world countries. Um, a lot of the things, uh, the first speaker has just done it because we, uh, I wanted to ask all of that. Go ahead, go ahead, Chanjan. A network, network problems in a certain That's kingdom. Cool. Yes, so I think I'll, I'll just get the, the answers from, from the speaker because my first uh, speaker he just done it everything that I wanted to okay. say. Okay, no, no, thank you so much, no brother. We appreciate that. And then uh, Truman Hatebe, Bungan. 
Uh, uh, greetings uh, to you, uh, Chairman, and to all the esteemed guests and all the members of Amanda Mnoto and Chana Sezan. No colleague, men, the challenges are to be from a different angle. I'm not going to mention names. I, I used to work for uh, one of the biggest companies in the poultry industry. So um, in terms of value chains, what I've realized more often than not, the strategies that seem to work best are those that would adopt a systems approach. By that, I mean having one entity that is going to be sort of a, a nationwide entity that is, you know, um, focusing on the market and then having all the farmers serving, for lack of a better word, serving under that entity or getting contracted to the main entity as and when required. So for as long as we keep operating in the way we operate, everyone doing his own things from you know, their respective corners and not having one strategy to say, let us have one strategy, let us submit to one entity that is going to represent that particular industry as black people. I'm not going to be apologetic as black people to say, if we want to make a dent in the industry, we need to nominate a particular entity that is going to be responsible, specifically focusing on access to market strategy and making sure that in terms of business development, all the farmers are able to then get um, orders through this one entity. I'll make an example. Someone said something about Nando's. We can also mention KFC, McDonald's, you, you name it. You know, in terms of the strategy, it's one strategy. All they do is they are very clear and deliberate in terms of their supply chain, how it's organized. You will not find a situation where you've got, you know, all sort of different players in the market competing. They, they, they almost... <laughs> They are capturing the industry, and that's exactly what they do. Ungatu and Aleo industry is colonized. Exactly, that's what they do. They are very clear. Ugoti Nangu, Sim Tembayo, who's got all the resources, the expertise to do this particular uh, job. And that person or that entity is then charged with the responsibility to run with that initiative to say when I was in the market, when I was going to make sure that you set the standards and we are going to submit to you. Uh, you're going to tell yes, us yes. Yeah. what you yeah. need. Then as sure. farmers, we support that initiative. Then we all benefit. It becomes a win-win type of a situation. So yes. the, for as long as we don't do that and everyone wants to be big in, in, in that territory, wherever they're operating from, they want to be big in KZN and someone in Gauteng wants to be, you know, big and, and renowned to go to Yena or, 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 or Petty Market, Gauteng. Then we continue to have all these challenges where we say go to Okay, no, in, the, in, the inter in, in the interest of time, Shubi, I think your mm. point has been made. It's very clear. Uh, that's why we have this platform. That's why we are organizing a rural chamber of commerce and industry because we have to organize for economic power, right? So mm. you, you've got very, very good point. And, and I'm sure you're going to be there uh, at Onomo this month because that's exactly the point where we shall have the Minister of Lands and Rural Development. Because like we have said, lots of land puzzles, everything, but we are so disorganized. We are yep. unorganized for economic power. And that's a point that I think you are making, which is very important. Uh, Comfort Kumede, if I may come to you, because we are running out of time. We've got to close off now. Comfort Kumede, quickly, please. Um, thank you so much for, for the uh, welcoming and invitation to the meeting. My name is uh, Comfort Kumete, the National President for Gender-Based Violence and Femicide. 
also the national president for 1,500 organizations, nationally and internationally. Uh, through African countries, we are working with over 21 African countries promoting uh, economic empowerment for an African child and a black person. So um, I liked the, the, the presentation that uh, Mr. Ratongwa made. And just to touch base in, in few questions on, on the challenges that now we have. Yes, we have attended the, the program back in 2015 when they were doing awareness programs. So there were a lot of, of loopholes in that. That's why as the national uh, organizations, we've decided to pause because um, there's no funding or any assistance in terms of we, we are coming with over 1,500 plots. Each and every organization has its plots, has its farms, and they've already started. So now the, the challenges that we have uh, within uh, South Africa, as, as I'm counting it through my stats now, is we all have those farms, we all have those um, cattle, some of us, but the government, the government system and how they operate and their regulations are not uh, supporting black empowerment, are not supporting an African child to rise. So um, in, in a better phrase to put this, we, we are willing to, to come on board all national organizations and directors to see how we can make this successful. We can come with all the equipment that is necessary. So and needed to the panel. I'm also the CEO of the SADC Chamber of Commerce in, in South Africa. And we, we've been doing these programs. There are 64% achievements that we did so far uh, in six months. So um, I, I'd wish so much because I'm also in the panelist of agriculture. We are amending some of the, the regulations there. We are amending some of the acts that can accommodate uh, our African farmers, we LGBTQI, faith-based, disability, you know, Tusa girl, child, all those programs are in one group, which 10% of those programs are approved within uh, the, the government national structure. So I'm happy because as independent as we are, trying to shift away from, from the abuse that we get from government, um, we would be able to, to push forward will be able to support your programs. I'm um, also with the national uh, organizer and the assistant who's organizing all these um, awareness programs, who's organizing all the trips for us. Um, so I, I'm quite happy to be part of this. And there's no door that we cannot break as national organizers. And I'm Thank happy you. that I've seen the, the Rural Chamber of Commerce. When it was yes. introduced uh, to me by the Kings, I received it from the King of Northwest saying, young man, I need you to help these people. I need you to, to assist this chamber mm -hmm. in, in unlocking all the legalities, the policies. And we coming to dairy, we have all the legal rights for trade policies. We have all the legal rights for brand marking. We have all the legal rights to store shelving our products. So to cut the, the long story short, I'm looking forward in how we can assist as national organizations independent, shifting away from government, empowering our own African people and engaging with these 21 African countries that wants to work with South Africans. Looking at Thank the BRICS again, the chamber, all the chambers in South Africa, they are nominated to take part and be delegates to promote economic empowerment and entrepreneurship. Thank you so much. Uh, Palatoi, can you show your face? People want to see you. They are not sure whether you are the robot or <laughs> you are the real, <laughs> the, the real is, person. This is okay. uh, comfort to me. Oh, thank you so much, Mgun. Listen, uh, you, you are so there much. during the launch of the chamber, Mgun. Um, uh, you, you, Mgun, you have to be there when Mbumawa uh, Mbenu Mbumet. So, when Anje, by all means, by hook and crook, I'm getting you there. You've got to come with your team, because this thing at the show had the uh, of working like islands. I'm the vice chairperson of BRICS as well, WBAA on food security. Actually, in the next week or so, I'm gonna be inviting the president of BRICS to come and speak on this platform. Why? Because we are trying to now streamline things.
and and make sure that we identify programs. Many, I always say we have employed them with our vote. So I always tell them, even on my shows, you are our employee. I know here, with respect, there are a lot of government uh, leaders who are in this group, including mayors and people who are MPs, and I respect that. But they must know that they've been employed by us through the vote. That's why we're able to vote them out if they don't work for us and vote them in if they work for us and support them. So we've got to tell them that this is what we need. But we are not going to have political bottlenecks where we rely on politics uh, for us to move forward. Because Mr. Van der Merwen, Stienkamp, don't go and ask politicians to start business. It's only black people who go to politicians to ask how do we start a business when that politician has not even sold fed cooks. So we we are very intentional, and I want you there, Paratoya, together with your team, because we must streamline this thing. So thank you so much for showing your face uh, to the people. I think we, we, we have reached the end uh, because we've got another meeting coming. I want a very quick, for just a minute, uh, I'm sitting here uh, uh, with the sisters in Bloemfontein together with uh, Godfrey. Before our main speaker close up, I want Godfrey to give you just a view to the, 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 the strategy of uh, the, the Cows Hotel and what we went to see in Germany, which we are going to integrate as, as part of the whole and including training. The markets, don't worry, we are the markets. We're, we're gonna get the markets and formalize it and even go to the mainstream market. I've got my sis, a sister here uh, uh, and Godfrey. Hi. Hi, greet them sister who's a nun, Hi. Uh, a Catholic sister. And you've seen my other sister from Isutu, Hello. pharmacist, who's a pharmacist. And then this is Godfrey Marani. Just quickly Godfrey and then we hand over to our speaker. We have done a study which ended up in a free state dairy project, which we all know, uh, where a mayor in that area promoted uh, how the communities can contribute with their cows to come to uh, this. And we have done a thorough study from Western Cape up to all over uh, and found out what is it that um, um, uh, upcoming dairy farmers can do. We are following the German model where they started with a cow and continued and started value adding. Mm -hmm. And that value added uh, program is what we are going to be doing. And we are going to uh, access you some of that technology. We've got the business plans, we've got the markets is not an issue as this is talking about. We've got international markets. We are breaking through these cartels which are there and together we'll get it done. So we, we have done a thorough study, we know we will share with those on the 22nd. Yeah, 22nd. We are going to share with you the business plan and the model and work together with Mr. Rathogwa in the sense that we are going to, to then roll out these programs and follow up what we did before, like in the free state. You will see what we did and we'll then discuss with you how we are going to get forward and do things right. Integrated daily, where we are going to promote zero grazing and out of zero grazing, uh, renewed renewable energy and so on, which is being promoted. Yes. And that's what we are going to do. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Godfrey. Um, I won't tell you about the project he facilitated, but the infamous project of Free State, which you know about, that's got to do with dairy. It had been brought here by the very same man, but it got hijacked and there, there are many things that, had, that happened. We had gone to Germany to look at a uh, cow's hotel, uh, cows that get massaged yeah. and there's music sung to them, classic music. So that they perform. So that they perform yeah. and release more milk. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. uh, one of the cows was producing how many liters? 30 yeah. or so. 70. 20, 70 liters yeah. a, day, a day, which was quite amazing. Mm -hmm. So we are going to uh, do mm -hmm. all of those things so that you have your cows mm -hmm. having classic music, mm -hmm. by the <laughs> the, the, the produce, you know. So Mr. Ratokwa, uh, please have your parting shot, my brother, before we, we, we jet out. Opportunity to come and share with you what we're doing at Milik SA. This for me is very, very much encouraging. The sooner we come together and work as a family, the better for our country. And uh, I think we are going to make it happen. 
provided we come, we engage one another, we address issues based on the reality on the ground. And once again, I'll be with you in, on the 22nd, and uh, we're going to be engaging one another. What I can share you, I've been approached by somebody who has been approached by Chinese. They want 200 tons of milk powder per week. And he came to me, can you supply? I said, unfortunately not. The farmers that I work with, they cannot. They need milk powder, 200 tons of milk powder per week. Yeah. In short, the opportunities are there. We have got the resources, but let's organize them for the greater good. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much, Mr. Ratogba. And thanks to everybody for really tuning in this evening. Please remember the 22nd of November at the Onomo Hotel. It's just 500 rent to come through. That money is merely covering the costs of hosting you as well as the meals for the day so that you do not get hungry. Uh, we want to empower you. And I'm going to re sincerely request those who are leading organizations, bring your own people. And the space is limited only 250 people. And beyond that, we can't take people. And we shall be dealing with these issues and making sure that we push for economic emancipation of the indigenous people, preparing for many, many things that are going to be coming subsequent. Listen to us on Ukose FM radio Wednesdays, 20 past eight. Tomorrow, for those who are in Devon, I'm on highway radio at about 10 past six and other radio stations that we always announce ourselves to be in, in terms of driving economic development. God bless you and have a great week ahead. Stella, you contact details. Go one day, Lempense, no goes. One day, Lempense, I once invited him. Uh, give them your contact, please. Uh, let me stop this. Thank you.